All right. We will call the meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. If everybody could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, All right, roll call. Andrew McGee. Here. Philip Snowberger. Here. Lauren Foley. Nathan Harris. Here. Steve Milstead. Here. Danny Powers. Here. Dave Taylor. Okay. We'll move on to approval of the agenda. Mr. President, uh, there has been a request from um, a property owner. I want to call them a remonstrator because they don't know for sure if they're going to remonstrate, but a property owner concerning uh, item 6H, approval of Whitestown Thoroughfam Fair Plan updates. Uh, Mr. Sapp, who's present in the room on this side, um, has requested that the board uh, continue that matter. Um, I have spoken with staff and staff I uh, would prefer to proceed tonight, but Mr. Sapp indicates that he just received notice of this within the last couple of days, Mr. Sapp. But just, just today received notice of it um, and uh, would like some time to gather some additional information. Just for the record, this is a matter that would be recommended to the council one way or the other, and the council will have a final decision. So there would be an opportunity to present information to the council as well, but it's at the pleasure of the board if you'd like to proceed as staff would like or continue as the property owner has requested. Okay. Hearing the request, discussion. I guess, do we know um, why the homeowner just got notice today? Is there a Sure. So this is a comprehensive plan modification. It is not a rezone or a zoning that requires a notice to specific property owners were modifying the comp plan. And as part of that, one of the properties where there's a proposed future road. Um, and, and this is a modification of the comp plan on the basis of the thoroughfare plan. So we're saying this is, we'll design our roads and streets consistent with what we think the future is going to look like. And if there's a future improvement, this is what we would recommend. Thoroughfare plan is already consistent with what's being proposed tonight. The difference is this is a more conceptual plan, shows a little bit more detail than our prior statements did. And so the notice, as you'll notice in this public notice report, the notice for those only goes out in the newspaper. So the notice was sufficient in the newspaper. We followed the statute, but uh, they didn't receive a mailed notice because of that. Anyway, I'd entertain a motion. So we just either need a motion to continue that item or a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Um, sorry, I will. Oh, sorry. We'll make one amendment. Um, we're gonna come. I'll make a motion to combine items D and E into one presentation. Um, but separate motions. And then combine items F and G into one presentation and one motion. Yeah. F and G can be just one motion. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Agenda is approved with changes. So just for the record, for those that are sitting out there, we're just combining two items, D and E are combined into one and F and G for presentation, but otherwise the agenda is approved as otherwise presented. So there'll be no continuance. All right, August 14th meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the August 14th meeting minutes. Second. Second. So a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. And then public request to speak on topics not related to an agenda item. Um, I see public requests to speak for items on the agenda, but have we received any for? Nope. Okay. 
any online. All right. Seeing no others in the room, we'll move on. Uh, and also seeing no presentations or unfinished business, we will move on to um, item A. It appears to be withdrawn. Let me give that and just to, for the record, withdrawn from the petitioner. Yeah, just note for the record that that item is withdrawn and the board accepts the withdrawal. Okay. <clears throat> So item B, PC 21-046-DP, who's your to-go commitment modification? Petitioner, you want to approach the podium? Hi, my name is Rusty Spires, and my firm is Spires Engineering. I work for, uh, <clears throat> at least on this project, Indy Holdings. And last year, we got our plans approved, our Marie Platt approved the uh, plan commission and one of the title commitments um, was to withhold the, the initial uh, building permit until the roadways and the surrounding infrastructure was complete. And that's kind of dragging on. And we realized and worked with staff that maybe um, asking that commitment to be changed where they could get started with the building construction, but withhold the certificate of occupancy until the roadways are complete. So that's our request. You still have control over the building opening and nobody wants the building to open without the roadways and the drainage and the sewer. So it wouldn't change that. It just let them get started a little earlier and you still have control over the opening of the store. Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, is staff memo on this item? Or? Yeah, so the applicant is requesting to amend a commitment they previously agreed to as part of a development plan. Uh, the site in question is the Hoosier to Go gas station, which is located near Albert S. White and Main Street. It's part of the Bridal Oaks development, which has the existing Meadows, Ma Meadows on Main apartments and Leo Brock cottages nearby. The previous commitment required Spur Street to be constructed before the building permits could be released. Um, and at this point, neither Phipps Lane or Spur Street have been constructed. Staff is recommending the commitment language be modified to allow construction of the building, but the certificate of occupancy cannot be released until Spur Street is fully constructed. Um, that language is explicitly written out in the staff memo, um, and this commission can approve, deny, or modify that commitment language. This request will not go to town council. All right. Thank you. Is there any public request to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none in the room and none online. We'll open up to commission if there's any questions, comments. So is this, I see as part of our packet tonight, there's obviously two roads. Is Spur Street the one that runs on the east side of the property? Okay. And so does that mean probably more of a question for Danny? This road, I mean, before they get occupancy, is it like 100% complete top coat asphalt, everything signed off by public works? Yeah, that would be the intent of the modification of the commitment. Okay. It has to be 100% completed. Okay. The other questions yeah yeah is, is this road a, a part of your development or is it done by others or what's you can come back who, who's it. responsible for construction of, of spur street uh, that's a by the seller of the property it's a strong box kite i don't know they have two names but um yeah the developer of the the region and my client is the purchase of that lot and we'll build the hoosier to go do they give you timing on on the road construction? Oh, sorry? Do they give you timing on the road construction? Oh, there's been some. Uh, no, it's probably going to be um, next year before it's complete because the the asphalt plant shut down, and um, they probably won't be able to get that done before the plant shut down.
I'd make a motion to approve the PC 21-46 DP Hoosier to go commitment modification. I'll second. Just to clarify, to specify Spur Street must be fully constructed to town standards before a significant vacancy will be issued. Yes. Okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, modification is approved. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to item C, Prairie Chase Platt vacation. Petitioner. Good evening. I'm Rick Ellis with Wine Engineers. Uh, tonight I'm representing DR Horton and um, specifically specifically here to talk about the Prairie Chase subdivision. Um, we are seeking to vacate a narrow strip along the south property line of the uh, platted area that, uh, that excuse me, is, was platted earlier. Um, there's a deed overlap that uh, we didn't address at the time or prior to platting the secondary plat. Um, so that's that's our request. We'd be happy to answer any questions anybody may have. The staff. The plat vacation request is to vacate a portion of property from the common area in the approved Prairie Trace plat. Uh, the vacation removes any covenants or restrictions on the property and it legally removes it from that approved plat. Staff is in favor of the plat vacation, and this would be a motion to the board to approve or deny the plat vacation request. It will not go to council. Okay. And public request to speak on this item. I will, for the record, say we did receive a letter from uh, Mike Hancock of the Lions Club, but we also received notice today from Mike Hancock of the president of the Whitestown Lions Club. Um, he was retracting his previous letter so um and did not wish to remonstrate against the petition um so i'll make that clear for the record um you do have one public request to speak on this item cheryl hancock Good evening, um, Cheryl Hancock, 5400 East, 300 South. I am representing the White Sand Lions Club tonight. Um, we did reach an agreement with um, Prairie Chase today, and we are in favor of the um, flag that they're asking to be removed. Thank you. <clears throat> was the only public request to speak I had before the meeting started. Is there any additional? I see none online. Any in the room? Okay. Close the public hearing. Commission, questions, comments, or entertain a motion? Seems pretty straightforward to me. So I'll make a motion to approve the Prairie Chase Platte vacation. Second. All right. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Approved. Uh, so now items D and E is one presentation, but two separate motions. Uh, Man Brothers Friendly Market, uh, PC 23-035, primary plat. PC 23-036 concept plan. Yeah, good evening. My name is Todd Starr. I'm with Starr Associates, 215 Alabama Street, Lafayette, Indiana. Um, I'm here representing Man Brothers Holdings LLC, also known as Family Market. Um, <clears throat> we're combining both of the requests. Uh, the property is located at the northeast corner of Albert S. White Drive and County Road 450 East. 
It currently consists of two parcels uh, with an existing tri-level house and a garage. Neither one is very pretty. Um, back in 2021, the site was rezoned from general agriculture to light industrial I-1. And in 2022, we obtained a development standard variance for the landscaping because of the tightness of the uh, property and easements. Uh, we got a slight reduction of the uh, landscape uh, quantities. Um, <clears throat> what we're proposing to do is combine these two parcels into one lot and dedicate the, the appropriate right of way, uh, showing the existing easements and then actually reserving some future easements for some additional uh, future potential extensions of utilities. Um, so as far as the, the, concept, the concept plan goes, uh, we're proposing a 6,200 square foot uh, convenience store and gas station. Uh, on the south side, there will be five uh, fuel islands uh, with a canopy. And on the north side, there will be a one, uh, there'll be a fuel pump for diesel and a canopy. Uh, the site will be accessed um, at the southeast corner, the northwest corner of the property. At the southeast corner, there will be a, a, a ride in and a ride out only because on uh, Albert Drive, Albert S. White Drive, they're the big median. Um, so to access, we have we're showing a deceleration lane uh, so that larger vehicles can enter, uh, semi trucks or delivery trucks can enter. And on the northwest side of the property, there will be a two way in and out um, for deliveries and, and clientele. Uh, on the north side of Albert S. White Drive, there will be a pedestrian walkway consistent with all the surrounding uh, the community and surrounding properties. Along the east uh, right away line of County Road 450 East, there will also be. Uh, that same type of walkway and integrated will be a, a sidewalk so that people can access uh, from the four the east side of 450 East to the convenience store. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I think other than that, the architect's currently working on plans. They do know it's a 965 overlay, so they're taking into account those type of restrictions that come with it. Um, other than that, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Staff report. The applicant is proposing a primary plat and a concept plan for an area at the intersection of Albert S. White and County Road 450. The primary plat is to combine two existing parcels into one, and the concept plan is to develop a gas station on the site with parking and fueling stations. The site is zoned light industrial with the I-65 overlay. The site did receive variances from landscaping requirements in 2022. Those landscaping rigs will be upheld at the development plan stage. Staff is providing favorable recommendations for dockets PC 23-035-PP and PC 23-036-CP. Staff finds the proposed use and plat are in compliance with the UDO. If the plan commission approves these items, staff recommends adding the condition to the concept plan that overnight truck trailer parking is not permitted. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the public hearing for this item. Uh, I do have one request to speak. Um, Brad, I'll let you. All right. There are some reminders. State your name and your address, please. Brad Schweibold, 3370 South, 450 East, Whitestown, Indiana. We live on the same road on 450. Thanks for coming tonight and protecting our interests. Uh, we've lived there for 21 years, and we really appreciate what you've done. Uh, as we've had a lot of development in the area to keep our sanity, and uh, we're thankful. Um, have no problems at all with the business. Uh, we love seeing you guys bring great businesses into the city, uh, and we wish them well and great prosperity. Our concern is the building there is uh, an abandoned, dilapidated building, uh, and it looks hideous. I mean, it's what people see when they come off of 267, and it doesn't represent the hard work that you guys have done to make the community look incredible. Um, it, it probably is a fire hazard. I don't know. Uh, I just, I hope you don't have to find out. And, uh, you know, it certainly needs to come down. Our concern is that you guys will take these plans, you'll grant approval, and then nothing happens for a while. It could, but it may not happen for a while and the building will remain. It would be nice to see if you would consider putting some teeth into your grant where the petitioner has to be able to remove the building within a reasonable window. 
30 days, 60 days, uh, or rescind the grant. We don't want to stop progress if they're looking at building. It's not going to cost that much probably to take that the, the structure down and to mow the lawn and take the garbage out. But it just doesn't represent the community. Thank you so much. And again, we, we really do wish them well. We just want to see the property look like the rest of the property and the standards that you've developed. Thank you very much. Is there one, just one second. Um, are there any other public requests to speak? None online. Is there any additional in the room? Okay. Seeing none in the room or online, now we'll close the public hearing and petitioner your chance to respond. Well, I know Jesse and his brother really well, and they, they really plan to start on this now, saying that's going to happen within 30 or 60 days. I also know they're doing two other gas stations, one uh, at 28 and uh, 52 and right near, just near uh, Clinton County. And this is going to be their next project. Now, whether I, I can tell you it's going to be 30 or 60 days, I couldn't guarantee you that. Because um, I know once they mobilize, they're going to do the demolition, they're going to get the site stripped, they're going to get this ready for construction. Uh, you know, I know that may not sound like, hey, it's going to happen soon. Uh, but trust me, we've been working on this for quite a while. Part of it was 450 East had been reconstructed entirely for all for what patched it on the northwest corner. And so a lot of the infrastructure was put in just for the site. Um, so I know they're going to be on it as soon as we get approvals on the developmental plan, which we do have a TAC meeting, I think, in two weeks. And then our hope is to be on the, the development plan uh, next uh, next month. So if we get approval of that, I mean, that kind of dictates when he's going to be able to get on site and start doing that, because we're also doing moving ahead with a lot of the drainage uh, calculations we've already submitted to Burke. Uh, I think we have one more submission and we'll get drainage approval from them. Uh, so I hope that shows that they're they're not going to sit on this. He's never sat on a project that we designed. The second we get approval, he will mobilize as soon as he gets off his other project. And I don't know if you've been out there, but he's doing the, the final grading on the, the, the 28 and the 52 process. So I can't guarantee a certain timeline, but I know that once we get development plan approval, he will be moving to this site and he will be he will start removal of that house. So. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Questions? From the commission comments so knowing that you know this in my opinion since this has to come back for development plan approval um it might be wise in my opinion maybe to have a conversation and say you know when that development plan comes because we know that's the next step to say you know hey in six months time we plan on having this done or something like that um at least, or at least a that. demolition. Yeah, or at least, you know, getting... And that makes sense, like that. because at that time, that's... I mean, the development plan, I mean, some of the back and forth will go on for a while before you start obtaining permits. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, like I said, I think we're at the tail end of that, but at the same time, it could go... You know, you're bantering with different utilities, and you're trying to get everything. But the second we get that approval, I, so to put it this way, when I go back tomorrow, I will give... I will be talking to Jesse and his brother and explaining... When we come to the development plan, we need to actually know exactly what, you know, what that is. One, two, three, four, five, six months. Right. And then have some teeth and, and hold him accountable for that. Right. So uh, he won't have any issue with that. So, okay. yeah. And one other item, uh, you mentioned the grass. Is grass being currently maintained on the property or at, you least, know, at least cut, I should say? He was out there about three weeks ago. Um, I mean, the, the middle section of it is not on the edges. I noticed when I was out there, someone from next door, uh, I think it was Coca-Cola on the east, was mowing the first 20 feet because there's a, I think they were coming over and mowing the front portion that particular day. In the middle, there's some trees that are kind of overgrown. Um, I'll discuss it with Jesse and, and make sure he puts forth a, an effort to make sure that that's like, you know, hey, it's what people see. Even though it's an industrial site, there are people who live to the north. So I'll make an emphasis to make sure that he addresses that. Yeah, our good enforcement folks have been out there and in contact with them quite frequently the last few months. Dave's well. not here, so <laughs> thanks, Todd. 
It's the first I've heard of it, but I'll, I'll, I will make sure to uh, readdress that with them on a personal nature. So, and reinforce that. And did you have any comments about the staff condition of the, the no overnight truck and trailer parking? No, there's not enough room to park a trailer. It would take up, it would take up the whole site. So that's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, I know there's sometimes where like, if they can fit a truck in overnight, they're, they'll park it there. So, uh, Knock on wood, I have not seen one on any of his other properties, so that okay. is not his intent. Now, if one breaks down and they have to tow it, it may sit there for a little bit. But other than that, that's not the intent. That's a question for staff. If the commitment is in here, then we can enforce it, correct? Is that correct? Okay. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Questions. I was saying about code. This this two motions correct two separate motions. Yeah, that's correct. One for the primary plat PP, and then one, a separate one for the CP with the proposed condition. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve docket PC twenty three dash zero three five dash PP primary plat. Friendly Market Man Brothers. No second. There's a motion and a second. Second. Oh. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> it's a, uh, motion, second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Primary plan is approved. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, docket PC 23-036-CP uh, concept plan friendly market um, with the uh, staff recommendation for the condition of no overnight semi truck or trailer parking is permitted on site. I'll second. All right. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Concept plan is approved. All right. So now we'll move on to F and G. Um, PC 23-040 and 41, concept plan and development plan for Rego fix. Petitioner, like to approach the podium. Good evening and thank you. Um, David McHenry with RegoFix. Uh, just like to ask for approval of our development plan for a 12,000 square foot training facility to be built adjacent and connected to our existing building. That's kind of where it lies. Any questions I can answer for you on it? I know you've it's been brought up a couple other times throughout the process. That's all your presentation. Yeah. Okay. It's short and sweet. I mean. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, staff report. The applicant is proposing to construct a building addition and additional parking to an existing site. The site is on <laughs> UD and I-65 overlay and located at the intersection of Anson Boulevard and County Road 450 South. The proposed development is in compliance with required setbacks, photometrics, landscaping, and architectural elevations. Staff is providing a fair recommendation for dockets PC 23-40-CP and PC 23-41-DP Rego Fix Development. Staff is providing a fair recommendation. Um, the proposed development is in compliance with applicable development standards, manages traffic, and the utilities have enough capacity. Um, in the development plan staff report, staff did make a comment about the photometric plans need to be updated. Those has, have since been revised and are, are in compliance now, so there's no need for that additional commitment. Okay. Uh, I'll open a public hearing on this item or these items. I did not. I do not have any requests to speak on this item before me. Is there anyone in the room? Who'd like, there's. Yeah, can't talk now. Anyone like to speak on this item? Any online? Okay. Seeing none in the room and none online, we'll close the public hearing. Questions, comments for the commission? Mm 
think it's pretty straightforward on this one. Yeah. <clears throat> May they entertain a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve PC 23-040 CP concept plan and PC 23-041 DP development plan for the Rego Fix building edition. Second. Was a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, concept plan, development plan are approved. Um, item H, approval of Weistown Thoroughfare Plan Updates. Good evening, Plan Commission. Um, before you is the, is it pulling up here? Get that to full screen mode here. Uh, before you is a, an amendment to the thoroughfare plan. Oh, maybe that screen will work. It's interesting. Oh, there it goes, man. Uh, we are. The, this proposal is attempting to show additional clarification uh, at two primary intersections of the Ronald Reagan Parkway, um, uh, Whitestown Parkway to the north and County Road 750 uh, to the south. Uh, that first uh, exhibit kind of gives the overview uh, of what's uh, proposed along there. Uh, we worked with uh, HWC on these proposed uh, exhibits uh, for the uh, for the plan. Um, the Whitestown Parkway uh, intersection actually shows two concepts: uh, an initial uh, um, roundabout proposal as uh, the roads uh, initially connect, uh, as well as a uh, concept of a actually a uh, separated crossing um, with kind of dual roundabout there as it's anticipated to have uh, heavy traffic you know, through that intersection uh, in the future uh, as well. So this is a, a document to help us uh, kind of look at what future right-of-way needs might be as development uh, gets proposed along those uh, corridors, uh, as well as uh, kind of road uh, alignments uh, as development happens uh, to be, uh, be aware of, of what's happening. The, the one to the south, uh, County Road 750 South, uh, I know this commission's uh, you've been asked about uh, road improvements and, and alignments uh, in relation to potential development around 750 South. Um, this concept takes into place uh, both the, al the uh, alignment of Ronald Reagan uh, that uh, comes up through here, uh, that's been uh, a part of the environmental documents that Boone County uh, and Henderson County put together uh, for that, uh, as well as takes into account the uh, Howard School and Cemetery that's there along County Road 750 South. Uh, like all of our planning documents, these are uh, kind of policy uh, decisions. This would be a recommendation on to the town council uh, if the plan commission's uh, in favor of this uh, change to the plan. Uh, and again, both of these intersections uh, are currently identified in the plan. This is just attempting to show additional detail with these concepts uh, that go through here. These are not construction uh, level uh, plans by any means, or, or uh, uh, this is just essentially concept to, to, to provide further clarification as uh, we anticipate you know, future development in these, in these areas. This would go on to the council for their uh, ultimate approval. It would be just a recommendation. John has a Yeah, Mr. President, just one other point, just on the legal side. Um, when you have a thoroughfare plan, particularly in these instances where you're showing a future road that doesn't exist now, this doesn't make this public right of way. It does not open up a road today. It does not turn it into a road that would still have to go through a whole separate process including to the extent that the road went exactly where we planned it, you know, the acquisition of property and, and that thing. So that's a whole separate process. We're not starting that process tonight. We're not 
Uh, we don't, Ronald Reagan Parkway, people are always asking when it's coming, not coming tomorrow, but we know it's in the future. So we're just planning for it as a planning document that helps us then plan development, as Todd said, around it. Uh, the other thing I would note is that there will have to be some coordination with Zionsville in this area, as we're in an area that includes both Whitestown areas and Zionsville areas in close proximity. So there will have to be some coordination with them. Um, but this is how the town intends to develop its infrastructure in relation to this uh, this project. Thank you. Um, we do have a public request to speak on this. Um, I assume as a gentleman asked for the continuance, but you can go ahead and approach the podium. Um, just remember to state your name and um, your address. Sure. My name is Jim Sapp, 5645 Castle Creek, Indianapolis. Uh, we own a farm on 750 and, four, and 375 East. Um, Zionsville has told us we're in the Zionsville zoning, Zionsville area, um, but you're all around us, Whitestown. Um, to be quite honest, I'd rather be in your area and we may do some things to see if we can be annexed. But right now, um, we didn't know, because it's in Zionsville, Zionsville told me at Christmas, they told me in February, nothing's happening with Ronald Reagan. And then today, my neighbor said, Jim, there's a hearing today. And I go, what? And so I called Zionsville. Zionsville said, no, there's nothing going on. They don't know anything about this. And I said, well, there is something going on. So I'm just asking. I'm not for or against it. I'm basically for Ronald Reagan. I, I want to study it and let our engineer look at it. I'm just asking for a continuance. Um, since Ronald Reagan, in my opinion, is not funded, I think you have plenty of time to give me a 30-day ability to study it a little more. Um, I am concerned that there's so many roundabouts right there and how it affects our property. So I'm asking for a continuance um, because I'm in a different jurisdiction and you're overseeing this, which seems a little unusual to me, but I kind of understand it. Um, so I'm asking for a continuance of 30 days to study it and see if I agree, I guess, and some of my neighbors do too. Thanks. Thank you. So again, this is just a recommendation. This is not approval. This goes on the town council. Correct. Well, this is like a zoning decision. Oh, you're I'm making sorry. a um, favorable, unfavorable, or neutral recommendation. Then the council will vote and determine whether they're going to adopt this into the comprehensive plan or not. And sorry, I was reminded, is there any additional or public requests to speak on this item? Planning Commission, um, Cheryl Hancock again. Um, I'm not so worried about sure. the ones on. There you go. Sorry, <laughs> I know. Uh, on White Sound Parkway, I'm more worried about the roundabouts on 750. Has anybody from the planning department talked to Zionsville? Seeing how these two roundabouts are fully and solely in Zionsville's territory. I mean, I don't think if it was if it was the other way around before we made a decision as a board or as a council that we should be telling another entity, another city, what we expect them to put in their territory, in my personal opinion. So I think that maybe continuation is not necessarily a bad idea to let them physically talk to Zionsville's planning department and ask them what their thoughts are before we approve something that is technically per this drawing in their area. Thank you. Staff want to address. Or is there any additional requests to speak before I jump ahead? Online, then. Okay. And, oh, there is one. More. Okay. Well, I think maybe there's that many you can hear. Us. Well, online can't hear you for and for the recording. Yeah. Or, well, I'm just uh, right across uh, Whitestown Parkway, where the roundabout 
and where it's going north of that. And I'm in that house right there. On the northwest corner of Whitestone Parkway. Yep, the northwest Eastern corner. Reagan. Yeah, and I'm just concerned about, you know, it being so close to the house. <clears throat> Actually, it's going to be practically right in my bedroom window. And uh, and now they're making, possibly there's going to be a double roundabout there. So I'm very concerned about it and also wonder why there isn't a possibility that, that there's a vacant lot next to me. And it's vacant and the whole road is over on my side. And why maybe if it has to go through there, why possibly it couldn't be split, at least maybe half of it over there to give me a little more room. So, uh, yeah, I'm just very concerned, you know, about it. And I, I really don't understand why, uh, well, I kind of do, but why when they come up from 750, why they didn't go ahead and uh, go over and split those lots south of Whitestown Parkway and come up through there and go by me on the west side, which would more or less be a straight line all the way up to where they're going to end up at 267 up there. It seems like that would be a, a cost less to make that shot up there than to come up by me and then turn and go over. But I can probably answer that because that interferes with the warehouses because I know they're going to put more warehouses in there. And there will be one, I assume, right on the other side of me. So I'm at a warehouse on one side and I'm at a four-lane highway on the other side. So, you know, I'm just very concerned about it. I don't know how it's all going to end up, but um, I guess that's all I got to say. I wish we could make a, at least make a change where they could put that over on that vacant lot or at least half of it over on that vacant lot next to me, <clears throat> which would give me a little more leeway there because the roundabout's going to be completely taking up most of my front yard what's left. So uh, that's all I can say. That's my concern. <clears throat> Thank you. Staff, want to go ahead. There's no one else in the uh, room. So, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to the alignment uh, of the Reagan first, and then uh, I think Danny might have a comment as well. So, the, the Reagan alignment that uh, what we're showing here doesn't change the proposed Reagan alignment that's been uh, essentially kind of on the books for probably the last 15, 20 years. That alignment, um, so part of that process in order to be eligible for federal funding, there's an environmental document that has to be prepared. Uh, and that's what that alignment follows, is that uh, alignment that was determined, like I said, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, to, to deviate from that, uh, uh, it, there's a you basically start that process over. So what we're proposing here doesn't vary from that alignment. We're we're taking that we're uh, attempting to say with the alignment we've been given, you know, how are these intersections potentially going to uh, function you know, moving moving forward? That's what this proposal uh, or this proposed amendment is is for. Yeah, just to follow up with Todd is this alignment's already been set and the thoroughfare plan does call for roundabouts at Whitestown Parkway and 750. Um, with Whitestown Parkway, just due to the proximity of 65 and then the potential uh, traffic that Whitestown Parkway could see, especially, you know, out in Perry Township someday, there, there's concern that just a normal roundabout may not be an acceptable level of service here. And one way to, uh, as a planning document, is just to allow this grade separate crossing. So that way, as development happens, this right way could be preserved. So in the future, if this is needed, you know, we will have the room without having to buy out businesses or houses uh, to put that intersection improvement in. And then for 750 as well, um, the thoroughfare plan already calls for a roundabout at 750 and Ronald Reagan Parkway. Uh, when we took a closer look at this, just because of the Howard Cemetery and also the Howard Schoolhouse, 
um, it makes sense for this geometry of the roundabout to be sh shifted up north because uh, we can't encroach in on the cemetery or the Howard schoolhouse itself. Um, even a signalized intersection would uh, be a problem to fit the necessary width of the road improvements needed. 750 on our thoroughfare plan is called for a major arterial, which is a total 120 foot right of way. And so typically it would be 60 foot from the center line, but due to the proximity of the graveyard and the house, the schoolhouse, it's just, there's not enough room for that full right away. So that's why we're showing it uh, move just as far north as would be required so we could fit the future road improvements. Um, and to Cheryl's uh, comment about uh, in Zionsville, you know, there would be no expectation Zions would ever build this. It's just our planning document showing these intersection improvements. Um, you know, seven, County Route 750 is in Whitestown to our western town limits. On the south side of the road is Whitestown, and on the north side is in rural Zionsville. Um, there are several overlapping areas in town uh, that we do have to coordinate with them on, you know, any intersection right away, road cut improvements. Um, Danny, can you speak to what would actually happen should, um, you know, plans actually move forward? As everybody's kind of stated, these are just planning documents. They don't, don't create any right away or anything like that. Um, I just remember, like, for example, when the Indianapolis and Whitestown roundabout was going in, there's there tons of public meetings and, you know, input was, was available once there were, you know, real plans that were going to be enacted. Sure. So, uh, the first thing would be the town identify getting funding. So whether it be local funding or we get some federal funds or MPO funds uh, to do this project, then we would proceed with design engineering. And so that we'd go out and do surveys, we'd get uh, design plans, then we'd start a meetings with, uh, you know, all the impacted stakeholders. And at that point, that's when the town would begin the process of purchasing any right of way that would be required for any road improvements. So how does <clears throat> the areas that part of Whitestown, then you go into Zionsville, then you go back to Whitestown, and, you know, we're saying that this plan is, we'll call it the Whitestown plan. How does, on the flip side, how does Zionsville handle, we'll call it the quote-unquote Zionsville plan? So typically, um you know, if their development happened on the north side of the road, it'd go through Zionsville's planning uh, process and we'd participate in their TAC. And part of that is, is uh, any right-of-way improvements, if there was utilities involved, uh, they would, you know, look to us for our comments, um, which would be any plans that we have, such as a thoroughfare plan and the right-of-way dedications. Um, there's, you know, uh, there's a several times that, you know, we participate in there, like for the crew car wash that's coming in, there's a storage place in Indianapolis Road, and they, uh, you know, they ask for our plans and they incorporate that into their plans. Now that's totally up to Zionsville to do that voluntarily. Um, we can't make them follow any of our plans, but uh, they've been great partners so far in any of their developments where our jurisdictions overlap. I mean, I guess I understand the the need for this with just trying to put something on paper to understand how this could potentially work. I think I feel like that's the stage that we're at right now, correct? That that's correct. Okay. We we have to plan for it. I mean, it's been discussed for 10 to 15 years. Um, so as I was mentioned, this is just planning. This is not, uh, there'll still be public input along the way. Um, this is planning for what may eventually come. Or it may not come. Or it may not come. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald Reagan has taken a long time. Um, it's not even done in Hendricks County still, so. So I say it is nice to see that there is some consideration for Howard School. I know they've come to a couple of public hearings and expressed um, 
you know, some concern over future development and how that might impact them. So this definitely the, does kind of take that into account. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I don't have any. Well, I will make a motion for um, favorable recommendation of the uh, Whitestown Thoroughfare Plan updates. Second. All right, it's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right. And item I, the 2024 Whitestown Planning Commission calendar approval. As part of your rules and procedures, this board uh, generally approves the next calendar year's uh, calendar um, and application schedule. So Laura put together all these dates before you this evening. Um, the Planning Commission public hearing dates follow the same pattern they always have been, which is, I believe, the second Monday of the month. And then the public notice deadlines follow those state statute requirements related to those dates. We are looking for a motion to approve, and then we'll work on getting everything updated so the future petitioners can begin planning ahead to the coming year. I'll make a motion to approve. I don't know what my calendar is a year from now, but you know, I'm with it. You do now. Yeah, I, I do now. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll second. That is a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, calendar is approved. And I don't see other business, but. It's, there's one staff announcement. Just one announcement. Um, we'll be doing another round of UDO text amendments. Um, so we'll send those out to you, Planning Commission members, uh, before the agenda goes out. That way you have a little bit more time to work with them. Um, we do these every year. So just like last year, we'll review, um, and it'll be a recommendation onto council. So just look for those in your inbox. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Number nine. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Motion second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good evening. <laughs>